Hello, everybody. We are thrilled to be with you for a Campbell football rewatch. We're going to go all the way back to the Pioneer Football League non-scholarship days back in 2017. One of the greatest half performances in Campbell football history. 49 to 10 was the final score, but we've got a lot to talk about, and we're going to have a lot of fun showing you. I'm Chris Amire. Evan Budrovich is alongside and the head coach of Campbell football, the former Carolina Panther, and of course, two-time national champion at Nebraska. Coach Mike Mentor is with us. And coach, before we get into these good memories back in 2017, how have you been doing uh, during the COVID-19, during this quarantine? How have things been for you there at the football office? Everything's been good. Um, you know, it, it's it's time for us to get back and get some football going. And, you know, again, I think it's like everybody else. You, you got a chance to spend a lot of time with the family and and um, kind of reconnect during a time that you normally wouldn't um, have that time with them. So that, that's been really good. And, and um, you know, really just trying to keep your routine going. Don't, don't try to stop your routine. Stay in in tune of what you're doing and so so you don't have to get ready you stay ready and uh, so it's it's been it's been um, a lot of reading a lot of watching film over and over and over and um, a lot of you know zoom meetings so i've gotten really good at technology i mean i wasn't very good with it um before this covid 19 quarantine time so so I'm, I'm excited that um, now I know how to work Zoom and um, WebEx. And um, I didn't even know what those things are. I, I actually bought some stock in Zoom, guys. So how about that? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, the quarantine has is, is definitely helped me. You know, guys, I, I didn't get a chance to buy stock, but I did get a chance to enjoy, <laughs> you, know, you think of this year in 2017, a, a 3-0 start in the league. They went to Dayton and won that game, and Dr. Creed's hugging Minter in the locker room, and Aaron Blockman's holding a little toy plane in the air, celebrating with Coach Lindsey, and this was, this was a really neat start to the season, so it's kind of cool to, to look back at this game as we get things started. All right, Coach, we go back to this game, and what's going to be funny here is after Valpo kicks off and I'm going to ask you, do you remember what happens in one of the best offensive halves in the history of Campbell football? Do you remember what happens on your very first play from scrimmage for your offense? Um, no. So I'm, I'm going to be <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be surprised like everybody else. <laughs> Here it is. You hate it. It's a fumble in one of the best one of the best halves of all time. Montel Goods fumbles on the first play from scrimmage. Spoiler alert, you guys score from here on out on every other offensive <laughs> play in this half. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what? That's the way to do it. Give them the ball, fumble the ball, and then score for the rest of the game every time you get the ball. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to make it exciting, Coach. This was also a game we're going to really highlight the offense, but coming into this game, and of course after this game, your defense – had more turnovers than any other team in all of FCS. That has really been a priority for you, as you see Ray Miller flying out from the side. Well, at this time, too, you got to re remember Valpo was a, was a great offense coming into this game. And so um, these guys were putting up all kind of points, and, and it was a big challenge for our defense to step up and, um, you know, take on this challenge. And I think they did, um, being able to hold this offense to 10 points or so. and I mean that's that's big time. Even even um, this drive right here um, is a, is a big opportunity for for all kind of things to happen um, bad. And and um, you know I, I'm just proud proud of the fact that our guys were able to bounce back. You fumble, you give them seven points, and they flying high, and then you take over the game. So then Coach Daniel Smith comes out and completes his first five passes, and we knew how fast the offense was with, with Dave Marsh. What did you like about the tempo of how they, they came to play? Well, you know what? It was a reason why I went and got Dave Marsh, right? I, I wanted that high-tempo offense, and once that offense got in the rhythm and, and Daniel got in the rhythm, it was pretty tough to, to, to defend this um, offense, as you can see right here. Everything is about taking what the defense gives you and getting into a rhythm with your quarterback and, 
And um, as you can see, man, we got into it, and it was hard to stop it. You guys played so fast with that offense, Coach. And this game, one of the outliers, but not too far off. You did everything in the first half in this game, but your team ends the year averaging 440 yards per game, 33 points per game. I don't care what league you're in, Coach. Just some amazing output from your offense that year. It, it really was. And, um, you know, again, when you bring in a new offensive coordinator um, and you want to bring that up-tempo style to, to your athletes, man, get the ball to the athletes. Let them play. Let, let, let the defense have to make plays opposed to you stopping yourself. And, and again, Daniel was so poised in his offense and, and really, again, just get into a rhythm and number 11 becomes very, very, very special. Um, when, when you see that. And you can see our guys hustling back to the line of scrimmage, looking for the next play. Let's go, let's go, let's go. And, um, man, it, it, it looks good when it works. And, you know, Coach, Montel Goods was coming off a, a ridiculous game where he set a single-game record at home against uh, Moorhead State. He comes out, of course, with a fumble. What did you like about his ability just to settle in and, and work in the running game? I think it was, um, you know, indicative of our football team uh, this year. Again, we started out bad. He started out bad. But, you know, he kept his head up and he kept fighting. And, and now, you know, he's running with some attitude. And I think it's, it's a big plus for our coaches to go right back to him. Um, I mean, that's, I think that's really big for um, a player to um, get that confidence back, right, after um, – you know, doing something like that. And so it, 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 I thought it was just a real good deal by our coaches by getting these kids back into the flow of things. Oh, look at Joe Pesh pulling around the corner trying to <laughs> <laughs> think of my Because that guy, he was a New Yorker. He had some personality, obviously a big guy. And that, that offensive line was pretty fun. We did the video that year where they sang the Thursday night football promo. <laughs> <laughs> with like a guitar, and it was Josh Hutto out there playing his guitar and everything. So that, that was a cool group. It really was. Them guys really enjoyed playing with each other and playing for one another. Um, again, man, it's fourth and one, and you got to go for it. And, and at that time, I was like, look, we got we to gotta get back in this and show these guys we're here to play and that we're here to win this football game. So to, to go for it on fourth down, to show everybody that we're here, here to make this um, – happen for ourselves was really good for them to capitalize on that. Coach, this was a game as well during your last year in the Pioneer Football League, of course, uh, when you came into this team, a non-scholarship team. So you had just started to think about the transition now and a tip of the cap. You talked about all the guys on the line, but a lot of these guys are playing without any form of scholarship whatsoever. And this was a team in a transition year going six and five, of course, that's what you have done, a winning record every year in scholarship ball. A lot is to be said about these guys that really work so hard as a non-scholarship squad. Listen, uh, they, they really, this group is really the foundation of what we, uh, what, what we built off of. And, um, you know, these guys transitioning, you know, this last year in, in non-scholarship ball, knowing that they was going to scholarship ball the next year uh, was, was really, I mean, that's a tough mental thing to have to deal with. You basically got two football teams because we, we had a lot of scholarship guys that couldn't play. And so they all had to red shirt. And so you basically had a, a great scout team um, to go against every week, but it, it was, it was a very difficult situation to, to kind of monitor two teams, at the same time during this year. So for them guys to have a winning record uh, with their last year in uh, the Pioneer Football League say, says a lot about their character and, and really what they, um, you know, came here to do, um, being non-scholarship players to, to be able to go out at, with a winning record is, is, is huge. Did, did you notice Darius Barnes there? I don't know if that was like a belly flop yeah. or just kind of an extending. <laughs> was he trying to work for a pile on there? <laughs> hey, listen, I, I don't know what that was. <laughs> yeah. He's diving all over the place. And he, look, he was trying to get every yard that he could during that time. 
there is, of course, that that tough injury his freshman year that, that that really slowed him down. But I think this also shows the options that you have at running back. You have carried this with you to a new offensive coordinator and offense. Just so many different ways to get the ball to your playmaker, and you see it here, especially when it's cut up, play after play after play. The defense doesn't know what direction to go. Doesn't know where you're coming from, man. <laughs> That, that was a great thing about this offense. Again, it, it's take what the defense gives you. And um, as you, as we know, me playing on defense, it's certain things that you got to give up on defense. And um, if, if the offense can find those holes, it's going to be a long day for you. Oh, beautiful throw and catch. That, that, that was big time right there. Right over the top, drop it in the bucket. Great catch and route by uh, Rod right there. That was a that was just a, a great play, man. I, I I love those days when when you can go down the field like that and score a touchdown. <laughs> Coach Zach Roderick, of course, redshirted by you all last year. You are very excited about him being able to to to, to come back and, and to play again because as it showed here, this was just him as a sophomore. He he's a big part of the offense and he can really catch the ball. Yeah, I mean his speed. He got a lot of speed too. He's a four, five guy that, that you know, that can run. Um, and now he has a fifth year under his belt. He's going to be real big for us this year. So um, it, it's funny to see these young guys <laughs> grow up. And um, and now he's going to be a big part of what we do next year to to try to see if we can uh, get over the hump of um, just winning six games. Let's let's get to seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's see if we can get over that hump, and he's going to be uh, one of those guys that can help us do that. Oh, here we go, play of the year. There it is. You, you and you know who picked it up? Wale. <laughs> hey, that was his biggest play is it, of his career. <laughs> look, look at him. He, he's going to dance for Mike. Wait, wait till he finds the photographer too. <laughs> You'll love, you'll love this, uh, th th this replay. Look, he acts like he's doing it. This is this is Wale's second tackle of his career and he picks it up and takes it to the house and the point right there come on now <laughs> oh man i'll tell you what he he was happy for for about you know three years after that so uh, <laughs> that, that was a that was a big time play by him Evan did a great job here. He has the sounds down because I butchered his name so bad. It was only the second time I've ever seen him make a tackle in his career. So I, I give myself that. I did recover, but I looked down on the piece of paper. I have no idea how to say that last name. Yeah, nobody does. So we just call him Wale for, for five years. That's it. Uh, by the way, there's a driving rainstorm that's going on, and that's another impressive thing. You saw, you, you saw how Valparaiso handled it. They couldn't get a punt off. Your offense is not missing a beat. We have a driving rain coming down. It was a warm day in October, but there's a driving rain, and you guys are still going like it's a totally dry surface. You, you know, again, this, this type of offense is short passes, get the ball out of the, out of the quarterback hands, distribute the ball to the playmakers and uh, with, with tempo and, and so rain at that time it, it doesn't it doesn't bother you as much and uh and so again we, we was attacking vertical so it, it, i'm gonna attack i'm gonna attack the width of the field and, and i'm gonna attack you vertically and again a great throw by daniel to put the ball right over the top um and i think who who was who it who caught that ball right oh, there with trey sanders number yeah one. big trey man great play by him and you know, he was one of my favorites. He was one of my favorites. This guy came to work every single day from the time that we got him to come from Atlanta, Georgia. And, uh, man, you know, just a great kid. Coach, you have had so much success, even before you had scholarships, and Trey Sanders is one of those of going down into Georgia, going down into Florida, getting guys. I know it's been a little harder to recruit over the past couple of months with with what you guys have been faced with and not being able to travel. But but talk a little bit about your recruiting and how hard everyone works to get these guys, not only from North Carolina, but all over the place. Listen, my, my, my coaches do a great job of, of that. Uh, we got a great plan. Uh, we, we recruit uh, from an area standpoint. Each coach have their area, their state. 
and um, and and so they they go find the, the, the players, and then we turn it over to the position coaches, and the position coaches then start recruiting these kids to convince them to come to Campbell. And and like you said, uh, Chris, we we've done a great job of getting into Florida and Georgia and those type places. But we was able to do that as non scholarship to start those relationships. Then when we came back and we said, hey, guess what? We got some money now. Um, <laughs> you know, give us some, you know, some of your top players. And, and we was able to do that. And I think that's helped us with a lot of different kids who dropped down from bigger schools. And um, so we've got a lot of kids from, from that because of the simple fact that we, we really took chances early on when we was non-scholarship. Um, early on, uh, you know, with some kids in those areas that set their relationship up. Mike, on that last play, Darian Slade nearly had a pick. You've moved <laughs> around between corner and safety, but how talented is that player, and what do you think his ceiling sort of is? Well, listen, uh, I, I was a very talented player, Evan, back in the day. You were? You know, if you can believe that. And uh, Slade is is – He's that type of player. I mean, he is really good. He he can play football. He's a football player and um, smart, understands the game, tough, you know, a leader on defense, um, you know. And, and you think about even last year, he was only playing, I think, eight games or something like that, had a couple of injuries and, and still was in the tops of tackles um, in the conference. Um, so he he he'll he'll be a kid that'll be another all conference kid again. Um, I think he got a chance. Oh oh, let me talk about this first. <laughs> Look at that. Uh, I don't think Wu ever ran that fast. He <laughs> ever ran that fast. Who is that? That's uh, what, eighteen. Wu, that's yeah, Wu, I already know he all. You know what? Wu <laughs> never was able to run forty yards and stay on his feet, and that's the first time that that happened. So. I have to give a shout out to the smartest football player I've ever had too. Cause I think he 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 won every scholar um, scholar athlete award known to man. So look at him, high and tight, great job. Bones, yeah, high and tight. Baby. Yeah, I love it. sixty-nine yards. <laughs> yeah, he, that's that's yeah, he was a quarterback in high school, right? We converted him to a tight end. Kid came in. He was probably about you know two hundred and ten pounds, and we turned him into a tight end. He left about two fifty and. And, and high stepping down the hashes. <laughs> but Coach, getting back to Slade, Slade <laughs> is, is going to be a great player for us, and, and we look forward to seeing him really crack the All-American list, I believe, next year. Coach, you talk about, about that. Gosh, you have had so much success, and I think it started in your uh, non-scholarship days because of necessity, but you can take quarterbacks, you can take athletes. If a guy has a brain, you can put him into the right spot, and you've done a great job of converting quarterbacks into all-conference wide receivers, tight ends, different positions. You know, you know, one of the things that when you look at high school football, you really want to just try to get the, the smartest um, – the all-around player that you can. And most of the time, they play playing quarterback in high school because they're the best athlete on the football field or they play playing running back. And so you try to get these guys and just get them on your football team and then really put them in positions that they can really be good at. I mean, you look at us, Darren Slade, who was a quarterback in high school, and we turned him into a corner and now a safety. And, um, and and so these are the type of things that, that you try to do when building a football team. Just get the best football players on your team and, and uh, go from there. Mike, I want to ask you, because obviously this game's raining, so you seem to wear the same outfit every game with a very tight <laughs> black uh, – I, I don't want to call it a skin-tight jacket, but you can see it in the bottom <laughs> of your screen there. It's sort of like a wind visor. Is that just a routine yeah. for you or sort of a creature of habit thing? Listen, it, it's it's uh, it's a creature of habit. See, like right now, in the off season, guys, I wear jeans and a black t shirt every single day. Okay, so I don't have to change. I don't have to worry about what I'm gonna wear. Like you, Evan, you want to get up and look cool and nice for all the fans out there. I don't. I just get a black t shirt and, and put on jeans and and I look the same every single day. 
I don't have to worry about that, Evan. That's the same thing on game day. I just put on the same thing every single game day, and, and um, it works out. Because I remember asking you at the Troy game this year. It was about 95 degrees, and you had your long sleeve <laughs> black top on, and I was really concerned for your health. But you were able to tough it out. That's right. See, it, it doesn't matter. Rain, sleet, snow, sunshine. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to wear the same outfit every Saturday. I remember we was playing um, Coastal Carolina, right? And Joe, um, the coach over there at the time, he was a Nebraska guy. And, he, and, and so, of course, we was talking about Nebraska and all that. He said, Coach, man, why do you have – because it was hot. Remember, we, we played them um, here on a Wednesday, and it was like at one o'clock in the afternoon, it was like a hundred degrees. And I got my long sleeve black shirt on. He said, Coach, what are you trying to prove? <laughs> he said, this, this, you, you don't have to do that, man. You put on another shirt. I said, no, Joe, this is just what I do, man. Every single day, it doesn't matter. Coach, I will say a couple weeks ago when I, uh, when I came in to talk to you, there was nobody else in the entire facility. Of course, all of your coaches and staff, they're working – but we're working from home doing social distancing. And I come in and you're in a black t-shirt and jeans <laughs> and you joke about how you don't know technology, but you know how to look at game film and you were looking at game film and you've told me that's been a lot of what you have been doing during this time where you literally can't do anything else. Why is that so valuable for you? Why do you as a head coach break down film so much? Well, I, I believe this as a, as a leader in anything that you're doing, you better know exactly what's going on on, on every phase of, of uh, you know, what you're leading on. And um, so I, I have to be ahead of my coaches, you know. Um, I, I got to know offense, defense, special teams, and, and not just have an idea about it. We got to be experts on it. And uh, you, you can only do that by spending time watching it. And, and, but I love it. I mean, I love dissecting things. I love breaking things down. Um, and then looking at the system and how it works and, and how you put it together and then how do you practice that throughout the season, the off season, all those type things, man. It, it's, it's very exciting where somebody probably look at me and say, man, why do you rewind it a hundred times? It's the same play, nothing changed. And, and I say it's every single piece of that play you got to, you got to dissect. And, and um, so – you know, watching film is, is the greatest thing that you can do as a coach. And even as a player, when I was a player, I did the same thing. Um, you you want to be ahead of your opponent as much as you can. Now, I, I know every other coach is out there doing it too that's in the Big South, and, and uh, you definitely don't want to fall behind. Coach, I want to ask you finally, so your offense scores 49, which is evident with this Broderick yeah. touchdown. But you have a yeah. player like Austin Pluckhorn, who led you in tackles that day, you know, walk on <laughs> from Fuquay. Levi Wiggins, who was a lesser-known kid at that time with an interception. What does that say about the depth of your team? Well, what, what it says is, is that everybody comes in and develops themselves, right? So you, you, you don't have to come in as some high-powered recruit to be able to turn into a great football player. All you have to do is come in and be ready to put in the work, which we talk about in our cornerstones, right? Have, have the ability to work hard and then have some enthusiasm about what you're doing. And if you have those things, you can do anything in this world you put your mind to. And, uh, you know, that's really what it says about our, our program is that we develop young men um, throughout. And we're going to develop you as a football player. You're going to get better every year. And we're going to develop you as a human being because, you know, when you leave here, um, you, you have to go into somebody's workforce and, and you're going to be, a, you know, a, a great citizen in, in this community. And, and so, you know, this, this is what we're all about. So when you have walk-ons um, that come in, nobody know them, and they put in the work and they develop to be guys that now you can look back and, and be proud that they were part of your program. Coach, this, if you see the number two up there in the thing, this isn't the end of the second half. This is the end of the second <laughs> quarter. You guys score 49 points in the first half and when Evan and I were discussing what to cut up for this Daniel Smith runs for 23 yards on one play in the second half Carlos Merritt has a good interception but that's it you let a lot of those other guys play a lot of them come in 
you took the foot off the gas because you were already up 49 to 10 in the first half. 484 total yards. Your defense had four takeaways. After that fumble on play one, you all scored on six straight drives. Just incredible. It, it really is. And, and um, hopefully this year we get a lot of that, right? Uh, where we can score, uh, score six times in a row. Um, and they, they, those type of games are great games to be a part of because you're not really sweating after the second quarter. You're like, oh, this, this is over, right? We good, okay? And, and so that's, the, that, that's that game that you just really love to be a part of and really just excited that you get to play other players, right? That the depth now, you get to let them get in, get, get them some game time, and, and um, that's really what it's about. But that, that's an amazing half. Um, to to talk about, to be able to dominate like that, and, and really a good football team at that time. Well, we're looking forward to it, too. Coach, thank you for taking time out of watching film, which I know you're doing, also getting ready for the guys to come back. We'll do this again uh, some summer, so ma make sure you have the uh, black T-shirt and jeans ready uh, <laughs> for another that. For Evan Budrovich, doing a great job um, with the commentating here and putting all of this together, and head coach Mike Minner. I'm Chris Haymeyer saying so long, and we'll talk to you soon.